In this video, we'll talk about keys to making the right decision to either attack or defending chess. So, what are some things that we need to consider before we decide? Do we need to become a chess master to understand and do these things? Well, the good news is you don't have to. Today, I'm going to show you practical tips on making the right decision for attack and defense. Stick around and we'll discuss them in details. First, for attack. Consider the following factors before going into an attack mode or not. Number one, attack when you have the advantage plus well-developed pieces. The attack has higher chances of success if you have the advantage. Normally, temporary ones like uh, momentarily enemy king is exposed, material pluses, lead in development, extra space, etc. Plus, being complemented with having your pieces already developed or active to execute the attack. In this position, white has lead in development. Now, that's the advantage. A temporary one because black is going to have some time to develop soon. And also, white has his pieces well developed already and close to the enemy king. While black pieces are yet to organize. This is a key moment for white to decide to attack or not. With the mentioned factors already checked, like uh, the temporary advantage already at hand, and the pieces being active and developed already, now this is green light to attack. Now there are many good moves actually, or should we say attacking moves, that this white is seeing here, like uh, could play uh, Queen to h5, h4 to h5, and there's also a brilliant move here, a potential knight takes h7, followed by queen h5, and another knight to g5. So these are the things that are very, uh, should we say, uh, possible attacking threats or moves for white to continue. Now, the next step is now to analyze the best of these options. Actually, the best move here is pretty more, uh, should we say, brilliant, and that is knight to f6 check. Now, if black ignores that with king to h8, then there is knight takes g, uh, or knight g takes h7, followed by queen to h5 later on. Uh, should we say, uh, if captures, then there's queen to h5, and the rook will swing to king side, and this is devastating for black already. Now, let me go back. Uh, if after uh, g takes f6, now, black uh, accepts the sacrifice, then there's another brilliant move here by knight takes h7. Now, what happens next is after knight takes h7, uh, queen, uh, a king takes knight, then there is queen to h5 check, uh, king g7, queen to g4 check, uh, Whatever, whatever square the, the black uh, goes, uh, there's checkmate on the next move. And now there we can see that the, the attack is, is successful. Now, uh, th this, this is already winning for white, whatever happens because of that sacrificial move, right? Now, let me go back. If after uh, knight f6 and captures that move, we capture the, the h7 pawn, and f5 is played here. Now, after h5, there's still a queen to h5. And this is already devastating for black, the same as with the previous lines. Now, uh, the rook is going to swing on the king side again. Uh, for example, uh, actually, the, the, the next move here is uh, for white is uh, queen to g5. And, in the, and when king captures the knight, the swing of rook uh, sorry, uh, to h3 will bring uh, the checkmate. If f6 is played, then it's the same story here with the rook g3 and black needs to sacrifice his queen just to avoid checkmate. But anyway, this is still losing for black. Now we can see that, you know, the attack became successful simply because white realized that he could capitalize on his temporary advantage while his pieces are well developed and active. The attack may appear potential at first. Like, but the given principle that we already know, we can have the confidence to make the right decision to proceed with the attack with higher chances of success.
Now, I just want to share very quickly. This is an online blitz game of one of my students playing black. He was 8 years old. Now, the position is obviously dominating for black. Look at the bishop on h3, killing the light squares. And of course, the rooks on the e-file are owning that file, right? Now, then he played rook to e2. Later, I asked him, uh, did you just have a mouse slip? I thought the best move would be uh, direct uh, rook takes uh, uh, e1, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, queen takes rook, and queen uh, takes c2. Now, uh, the game that would be longer, but that's the easier path to an advantage, right? Then he said to me, I'd rather want to attack the king than just take the c2 pawn. Now, let's go back. He played rook to e2, and his threat is obvious. He wanted to capture the f2 pawn, right? So, I was thinking about his, uh, his uh, should we say, his uh, reasons behind this, you know, playing this... Uh, a little odd to me at first. Now, he was actually right. He's got an attacking, active, and more aggressive mindset. Given that he has the light square advantage here, uh, with the bishop on h3, limiting the movement of the enemy king, and also his pieces are more active, the rooks are very active, the queen is very active. Now, he uses them all together to directly attack the king. Rook e2, again, as mentioned, attacks the f2 square or f2 pawn, with checkmate next. So rook takes e2, rook takes e2, queen f4, and after queen takes c2, white resigns. He can't protect uh, both the rook <coughs> and the bishop. Sorry. Number two, attack when your threat is more serious than your opponent's. Here, black played uh, bishop to, uh, to d5, attacking white's queen. Many amateurs would immediately react and play queen to d3, right? Or uh, queen to e3 or queen to e2, protecting either of these pawns. Now, but white could actually counter black's threat with a more serious threat. So let me go back. Now, and that move is actually bishop to d3. The idea is that after bishop takes f3, there is bishop takes f5 check first. Then after g6, Bishop takes g6 check, king to g7, and only then king takes f3. Notice how the game turned into white's favor because of a proactive thinking, always looking for threats rather than being passive. So how about when it comes to defending? Huh? When it comes to defending one's position, what should we do or what are the tips that we are going to consider? Of course, in reality, it's not just about attacking and attacking. There will be situations where we don't get and have what we desire. The principles are unsurprisingly simple. For defense, it's the opposite of what we already mentioned in the attack section. When you are under attack, should we counterattack or defend? First, defend if the opponent's threat is more serious. Now, uh, now let's go back to this position here. Uh, let's move over to this position. Here, in this game, white is down an exchange, but it's a pawn up. Actually, a pass pawn on e5 is the only compensation for that. He plays bishop to e2 and threatening bishop to, uh, to c4. All right, so that's uh, having a secure between the queen and the king. Now, black replies with h4. White should be careful and not to excited about you know bishop to c4 because why if after bishop to c4 um, h takes g3 now he can't go to h1 because there's checkmate the next move so he needs to move uh, forward to king h3 and after king to g7 um, white indeed uh, has a, the queen there but what's next what happens next rook h8 and after rook take a uh, rook h8, the the queen has to uh, to move and cover that check, and rook takes queen, king takes rook, and uh, after this move, uh, rook takes e6, and you know white is down a piece. So in other words, bishop c4 didn't work right away because black's threat 
with H4 was more serious and should we say more superior. Now let's go back. Uh, if after, uh, you know, uh, after h4 and queen takes uh, h4, now there's uh, rook uh, h6. Uh, bishop c4 doesn't work, obviously, because of this check. All right? And that's actually a checkmate there. So white should defend first by moving the knight away. And the best move is actually this. I'm talking about this. After bishop to e2, h4. Now, he needs to move the knight away, either uh, knight to h5 with a threat to f4, or should we say knight to f1 now nonetheless the threat of bishop c4 still uh gives inconvenience to black right so there are instances where an attack may be overpowered by the opponent's greater and more powerful attack so sometimes our own attack will need to take a back seat to give way for our defense next number two defend if your pieces are not well placed here there isn't much to think about black can consider aggressive ideas like bishop to g4 taking advantage of this weakness here in the light square and a pin for the knight uh he could also play knight to c7 and strike with b7 b5 later on knight to b4 you know attacking the queen side because enemy king is there but if and only if all of these factors, all of these ideas, if and only if becomes possible, if and only if, again, he gets the castle safely. Now, so before those aggressive thoughts and plans to become, you know, materialized, the best move is castles. Castle first and then develop. Otherwise, uh, if some other moves are, are being played by black, rook e1 will hunt him for the rest of the game. So there are many times that we need to consider safety. We need to consider development of pieces before having to proceed with the attack. And I remember a quote uh, somewhere that I read like, uh, uh, you do not have the right to attack when your pieces are underdeveloped. Now, I want to test your skill right away. Decision-making skill uh, when we attack or should we defend? So are you ready? Okay. Now, you are playing white here. Can you guess the best move? You can pause the video and try it. All right. Obviously, there is no threat to defend here for white, right? White has the advantage by having more space. Now, this is one. This is one principle that gives us the green light. Black, on the other hand, has cramped position, and his king is still at the center. The best decision is actually to attack. So, what triggers us to attack? Again, that's because we have a temporary advantage at the moment, as the enemy king is still at the center, and our pieces are already developed. Congratulations if you saw the move, f5. Now, by keeping his king at the center for so long, it seems that black has, you know, been begging us to be spanked, isn't it? Now, the move f5 tries to rip the position open to expose the king. Now, after f5, if black ignores it with just castles, right? Uh, there is f takes e6, f takes e6, and knight g5. And the weakness on e6 is enough for black to worry about for the next half of the game. Uh, if after e takes f5, e takes f5, g takes f5, um, actually the best move here is castles right away for black. Okay, but if after g takes f5, okay, now uh, there is bishop to g5, and black's king can only dream of a safe haven. So uh, the best move castle, by the way, I just want to go back. Uh, Though it's, this is this is the the better move for black, but uh, no, though white's advantage would not be in that, right? Now there you go. When it comes to attack or defense, now I want to remind you of a quote that I, I I said a while ago. When it comes to attack or defense, or should we say defense, you don't have the right to attack if you have not yet developed your pieces. Think about it. 
hey, check this video out to make sure that you get more important information to bring your chest to the next level.